So you and I are about to have a really complex conversation. So on that note, there are chapter times in the video description, but I urge you to go through this with me all the way because there are a lot of moving parts here. And I think that people's confusion as to what's happening is because they are just looking at it at a glance and they aren't doing the deep dive that's necessary to understand what's happening, not only with Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, but with movies in general. It's actually kind of fascinating, but also kind of scary. So here's, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is that after Fantastic Four and Pixels and Gods of Egypt, critics, the media, and a contingent of the audience, which we're going to call fanboys for the purposes of this discussion, they have realized that they actually have some power through social media to influence audiences and therefore Hollywood. And so some for good, some for bad. We're going to discuss the different motivations in just a moment. But anyway, after the success factor that was experienced with Fantastic Four, Pixels, and Gods of Egypt, <clears throat> this group is trying to see if they can pull that off with a mainstream major tentpole picture that is not so easy to dismiss as Fantastic Four, Pixels, and Gods of Egypt. And that's really what's going on here. I think there are still, there are still some people who feel that Batman v Superman perhaps does belong in that grouping, but it's not so overwhelmingly in that camp. And that's why you've had your first real argument arise. Few people would spring to defend those other films, but you need to understand that those films were stepping stones to the current situation. I wish that I could, I could say I was surprised, and I know Hollywood isn't surprised. I think Warner Brothers knew this was coming, which is, uh, I think they partially exacerbated the situation because of that. Uh, but I think that a lot of DC fans and movie fans didn't see this coming, and they're surprised to see the hate that, I think to be fair, some of them gleefully participated in with these other films, then be used against them themselves, right? It's like, and that's what happens when hate is injected into anything, right? You know, it's a, it's a very dangerous emotion uh, and it's extremely difficult to control. And I think that you're gonna see this just get worse before it gets better. So so let's discuss, all right? So that's my, that's my overall uh, basic uh, theory, right? That a group of people feels that they, uh, they have great power and unfortunately so far, they're not utilizing great responsibility. So. And so let's move on. So first of all, here's the, here's the situation. Here's the landscape. Batman v Superman is currently sitting at 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's like a Transformers level score. But again, people expect Transformers to get a score like that. They expect everybody to hate it. Uh, but that is not what people expect to come out of Batman v Superman. That is a property that people have a lot of respect for. Uh, although I think that the movies are vastly different. I'm removing my own personal opinion from this discussion because that would over that would complicate it. I am just talking about what's going on with the different, you know, powers that be that are at play. All right, so it's a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. The box office, though, really flew in the face of that. Uh, Batman v Superman, you know, despite the reviews coming out on Tuesday, uh, the Tuesday before the release when they still, you know, could have done some real damage. In fact, somebody tweet, retweeted me one site that said Batman v Superman did like $82 million on Friday. Apparently, some of you didn't read our review. So it's, you know, again, you can see right there evidence of this feeling of power, of influencing and being able to kill a movie and make a DOA. But it didn't work this time. All right. Fantastic Four, it worked. Pixels, it worked. Gods of Egypt, it worked. Didn't work here. Uh, so that's a little bit of a push and pull, which we'll also discuss. But anyway, $166 million domestic, best pre-summer opening ever for a movie. Uh, 254 overseas for a worldwide debut of $420 million. That is the biggest superhero debut ever worldwide, beating out the Avengers, the previous record holder, at $392.5 uh, million. Uh, and then the fourth biggest debut period of all time, behind uh, a lot of recent movies, by the way. So Star Wars The Force Awakens at 529, Jurassic World at 524.9, and the final Harry Potter movie at 483.2. Uh, so that's huge business for Batman v Superman and really something that Warner Brothers and Zack Snyder needed very much. And at the end of this video, we'll talk about what I think the future for these movies looks like despite all this, you know, bad publicity uh, at the moment. Again, this is a developing situation as we speak. But I feel that box office wise, Batman v Superman has two weeks 
after this to make a significant amount of money, uh, basically until The Jungle Book hits theaters April 15th. I think that'll be a very strong contender, but you know, Batman v Superman can make a lot of money in the meantime. And I think that it will. It's already halfway to the billion dollar club. Uh, and I, I'm seeing a, a very positive response from a lot of people. I know some people like to write it off as, oh, uh, you know, it's only a small contingent. And I know for some of you, it feels like there's just a few of us, uh, but I really do think that this is a from what I can see, a pretty evenly split, or maybe even 60% positive, 40% negative. But let's get, and they're already seeing a lot of repeat business, which is very encouraging for Warner Brothers as well. But what what's going on here? And I, by the way, I think that it's not any one of these things. I think it's everything. I think it's created a perfect storm that's swirling around Batman v Superman, uh, and probably I feel a number of movies going forward. So number one. I think some people genuinely don't like the movie. Some people are coming from a good place and this just isn't what they want to see in a superhero movie. They want fun and colorful. They want jokes, uh, you know, like uh, the Marvel movies do. Uh, and also, they're not up to date with what comic books have become and these properties have become. If you read comics today and you play video games today, Batman v Superman is very much in line with the medium. But if you only think of comics back to, you know, the cartoons uh, and, you know, what they were during the Silver Age, you know, this is a foreign entity to you, what Zack Snyder is trying to do here. So I think that's that's one problem. So people didn't like it because it wasn't what they wanted out of a superhero movie, and they also didn't like it because it's very inaccessible to non-comic book readers. Even that new deleted scene they just released, that's like a perfect example of uh, the movie being like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I think even the, even hardcore DC fans are like, I think that's Steppenwolf, but I honestly have no idea. There's like no clue there. And you know, you think he's holding mother boxes, but the way the character dissolves, uh, it makes no sense. It just it doesn't work with the mother box that we saw from the cyborg clip. So uh, it's 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 difficult. It's hard. It's you know it's um. It's, 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 it's very much of a puzzle, and some people don't want a puzzle, all right? So anyway, so, so that's, that's the first thing. I, I, and I also, but before, in the past, people would have said, okay, well, I don't like it, I'm going to go home. But now they're like, well, I don't like it, and since I don't like it and I want to like it, I'm going to use the power of the internet to try and destroy it and bully Warner Brothers into making it something that I would like, all right? So that's number one. Totally opinion-based. Two, uh... Too many superhero movies. A lot of people are starting to feel that way, from audiences to the media. Uh, and I think a lot of people feel that because Marvel was first, uh, Marvel should you know, be the only one that really stays around. I think Marvel almost is the Pixar of superhero uh, companies, that they can really do no wrong and they have tremendous uh, leeway they're given by everyone because they really set, set the standard and you know, they're what everybody feels is, is um, to a lot of people, they are what comic book movies should be. So they're like, fine, Marvel's here, that's enough. But, you know, you look at a movie like Birdman and how Alejandro Inarritu was in, able to tap into that dislike of the comic book movie, and you can see a lot of people saying, well, you know what, enough is enough already. Because just think about it. It used to be that comic book movies only came out in the summer, maybe at Christmas. But now, <clears throat> or Thanksgiving, but now they come out all year long. Here's one in March. Deadpool came out in February. And you're getting a situation where... There's no room for other movies. Not, forget just mid-range movies. There's no room for small movies. People say, you know, I can only spend so much money at the movie theater. I'm going to spend it on a big superhero movie. And so it's really killing the rest of the industry. And it's eating up people's, not only people's box office money, but also the budgets at the studios. Like what movies they want to make, what they want to green light, what they want to invest in. Uh, and so I think that a lot of people in the industry, in the press, and even some moviegoers are like, it's too much. And I'm going to just, I'm going to kill it by giving it bad press, bad reviews, and saying bad stuff about it online, just so, so that this thing goes away. So that's number two, all right? Too many superhero movies, going to put an end to it. That's the mentality for some people. Then three, the press. The press needs to be placated. They need to be treated very nicely. You've got to be like, oh, I love you, press. I mean, for instance, one of the stories I, I've told you guys, and it's one of my favorite, it's about you know, the, the way the press can be manipulated to some degree, is that, you know, the reason that Mission Impossible got so many good reviews, uh, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, was because they flew everyone to Dubai for that press junket. So all the reviewers were like, a free trip to Dubai, I'm having such a great time, this movie's amazing. And that was why that movie got such good reviews across the board, glowing reviews, even though in retrospect the movie, I think, is flawed. And we saw that later on with Tomorrowland, that Brad Bird is not a great live-action filmmaker. So I think that uh, I think that 
And also, so I have to say, I was disappointed that some people, I, I mean, I was debating whether or not to mention it, but, you know, I got a, a very nice box uh, for unboxing of Batman v Superman merchandise. I didn't open that up until after I reviewed the movie, and I was on the red carpet for Fantastic Four, and I had not wonderful things to say about that. Uh, many times I've, you know, the press, the, the, um, the press office has invited me to participate in something and I have not, you know, given it a great review. For instance, Cinderella, I got invited to a very early press screening of that from Disney. Didn't like it, didn't give it a good review. Uh, I think you just, the real name of the game is professionalism, right? Uh, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. So anyway, with the press, there's the press situation. Uh, and, you know, it's rumored that Disney has a wonderful relationship with the press, very inclusive. And even when they held up back on uh, access to Star Wars, that was on, that very much had the, the vibe of for the sake of the movie, right? Like to avoid spoilers, to keep this under wraps, like that. So I think Disney got a pass there. But I think if they were to continue with that, they would also run into problems. But anyway, the press likes to be treated really nicely. And so Warner Brothers, to some degree, well, actually to a large degree, did not do that because I think they were worried about this exactly. So this is where I think they exacerbated the situation. So Warner Brothers decided not to let anybody into the movie really far in advance unless they were in the upper echelon of press, like the Today Show, right? So everybody else had to wait. And even then, they decided, you know what, we're going to hold off on digital press largely. We're, you know, we're going to let everybody else see the movie the last possible moment. Uh, and I think a lot of times when that happens, press gets angry and press then for, therefore takes it out on the movie. So I think to some degree that happened a little bit. Uh, and, th and that's unfortunate. You know, press, you know, shouldn't have ulter ulterior motives. I think when you read a review, you shouldn't be like, was someone mean to this reviewer before they went into the theater and that's why they're being so horrible to it? You know, that's not the way it should be. Then four, the fourth, there are four things here. The fourth thing is, is that I think that just like with politics and sports, I think there's a real amount of hate that's been injected into the, into the whole situation, which is unfortunate. And I think that entertainment news is going the way of actual regular news, like Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, very opinion-based, uh, you know, really saying what the audience wants to hear, you know, a lot of the times, uh, very inflammatory, very, you know, click-centric. Uh, and I think that, you know, you, see, you saw it happen to the regular news, and like the idea of objectivity and responsibility starts to go away. And I talked about this in my Gods of Egypt uh, review. I said, you know, it's one thing to call the movie out on its whitewashing, which it totally deserves, but it's another to just say the whole rest of the movie is garbage when there's actually some, some good things here. And I think you're seeing that happen with Batman v Superman. Like someone gets upset about maybe something in the movie and then they're like, well, then the whole thing's crap. And I'm not even going to try and think about what was trying to be achieved here. And You know, Fantastic Four had the same situation. Pixels. Uh, you know, people just decide, you know, they were thirsty. They were, people demanded blood. The audience demanded blood. And Unfortunately, uh, the, some of the powers that be gave it to them. So I think that you're seeing that happen as well, uh, which is which is really really unfortunate. And I, I worry about the future of filmmaking and you know film criticism for for that reason. So those are the four those are the four re things here. First off, it's opinion, just you know pure, pure opinion based. Uh, then it's too many superhero movies. People are worried, upset about that. Then it's how the press feels they're being treated. Uh, and then also it's just you know you know, also with teams you know like not wanting Marvel uh, to lose. Like some people want their team to be on top and they don't want anyone to compete with it or to be a uh, to unseat it potentially. And so they're really trying their hardest to undermine DC for that reason. So. You know, I think that going forward, this is really, we're at a, really at a, a turning point. And I'm, I don't know what direction we're going to go in. It depends on how Batman v Superman performs its second and third weekends. Don't, will it drop significantly? Or will it, it turn out to be critic proof? Now, some people will say, oh, it's, and some people are saying it's just another Transformers. But again, I don't agree. I mean, I, I've given good reviews to the Transformers movies because they're popcorn films. They're not supposed to be amazing. But I think that Batman v Superman was a very good film. I stand by my Stanley Kubrick comparison. Uh, is it at the level of all Stanley Kubrick movies? No, but when you think of the visuals and you think of what it tried to accomplish and the intellectual aspects of it, I think it's definitely like, you know, the shining of horror movies, right? Like the shining was a Stanley Kubrick's version of a horror movie. And I think that this is very much that kind of version of a comic book movie. And I'm very impressed by it. Uh, and you know, was it a hundred percent perfect? No, I said it had flaws in my review, uh, but the fact that no one's willing to applaud that effort, even, even the effort, I think really shows bias. And I've just outlined where that potential bias is, where, well, not potential, where the bias is potentially coming from. I think there's definite bias. 
But, you know, I, I don't, I think this is very problematic going forward because you're going to have a situation where the studios are, feel like they've been pitted against fans, the hardcore fans, and they're pitted against the digital press. That's going to affect access, you know, maybe not getting in, into any movies uh, in advance, right? Not being able to participate in any of this kind of publicity. I think that's really, un, that would be really unfortunate. And I think it would just ratchet things up and make it even more of, uh, of an argumentative situation. So that, that has to be avoided. Uh, and I think that you might have a situation where now it becomes more formulaic movie making, where someone's like, well, I, I would like to take a risk, but since I'm gonna get roasted over the coals, if I do, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should just give the audience exactly what they asked for, uh, which would be unfortunate. Maybe this will be like a Jurassic World situation, where Jurassic World, you know, I didn't love Jurassic World. I liked it the more I saw it. It's a pleasant film, but that was pretty uh, uh, critic proof, but it was, still wasn't, you know, roasted like this one was. So what do I think is the situation for Batman v Superman going forward? At this moment, I feel it's okay. I feel it made so much money its opening weekend that they're not going to change Justice League. I think, and also Terrio has said it's going to be lighter in tone. Would I be potentially tweaking it right now, the script? Would I be taking a hard look at it? And before their April, I believe, 22nd shoot date? You bet. But I wouldn't do anything publicly, and I certainly wouldn't remove Zack Snyder because it would be too embarrassing. And it would hurt the movie's box office, you know, it hurt Batman v Superman's box office. There needs to be a unified front, especially because the numbers are so strong at the box office. So I think... In the immediate future, the DC movies are going to go forward as planned, uh, and we'll see what happens. I would say that Warner Brothers would be better off spending more time massaging its relationship with the press and with the fans, trying to do more of an extensive uh, outreach to both groups, uh, and trying to woo them and win them over, and be like, "Why do you hate? You know, why don't you work with us?" And you know, why, let me try to explain to you what I was trying to accomplish. I think that would uh, benefit it substantially, and I think that you know if if the digital press isn't a little bit more responsible, uh, I think you're going to see something that could happen. You know, the studios, who knows how difficult and tough they could get. Uh, but you could see a situation emerge where they really try and put a stop or at least slow down, I think, this renaissance of movie reporting that's going on right now, which is very exciting and we all enjoy. Uh, but, if, you know, that that power is used for evil. Uh, I fear how Hollywood will retaliate. Uh, you know, big business, you know, plays to win. Uh, and I think that th this is a serious wound. And I'm sure that Warner Brothers is talking right now about uh, what their different courses of action could be, both defense and offense. So that's that's my assessment of the situation as it stands. Again, I cannot stress this enough at the moment. Uh, I'm very curious to what your thoughts on it, and I would really like to know why some people are so against this movie. Someone I asked someone this you know this morning on Twitter, and I said it was I believe BTT viewer Juan Nunez, and I said Juan. Why on earth do you want to see Batman v Superman fail? Why are you rooting for it to fail? Uh, and he said, because I want, I, I love the DC movies and I want to see them, you know, to, to, I want to see them be better. But I think the, the real crux there is just with the opinion base, that you, you know, number one, a lot of us liked it. So the real thing is, is that Juan doesn't want the DC movies to be better. He wants them to be what he wants. And he feels that thanks to social media, he has the ability to perhaps force Warner Brothers to make that change. And it's a difficult, it's a very difficult situation. So we'll see how it progresses both for the DC movies and for movies in general moving forward. But I hope you've enjoyed this uh, special report and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you down below. All right, thanks for watching.